I stumbled across this other YouTube guy, uh, Bus Life Adventures, and I uh, saw him converting a school bus and traveling around, living in it, snowboarding, and uh, I just really liked that idea, that concept of you know not paying rent, kind of getting away from the status quo of things, and uh, being able to go off on adventure and bring my home with me everywhere. I got this idea that I've had for a long time, but kind of revamped it of uh, building a mobile studio and uh, kind of wanted to figure out a way to combine this way of living alternatively, um, being mobile, and having a studio with me at the same time. So I uh, started looking into bus conversions and just kind of ran with it from there. So I named the bus Roxanne. Um, you know, it's a it's a black bus. It almost looks like a prison bus. Um, and when I when I saw it, I was just like, it just looks like Roxanne. You know, it looks kind of like a like a rocker biker sort of uh, aesthetic. And I just thought that that fit. And uh, I just ran with it. And so it's Dat Bus Roxanne. Um, Instagram is D A T underscore B U S. I've been thinking through a lot of the design elements and everything on the bus for a while, even before I bought the bus. Um, it's coming up on a year since I purchased it. Um, I was, you know, drawing out designs and plans, um, you know, f probably a year and a half ago, if not almost a little bit longer than that. So it's been an ongoing process and a lot of changes, you know. You know, you put one thing on paper and you get in the bus and you realize that there's, you know, certain obstructions and things that aren't going to work for you in that way. So I've had to redesign the bed area a couple times. I've redesigned the kitchen a couple of times. I've moved everything around probably twice at least um, before I've actually put things in. And I've built full benches over here and ripped them out and rebuilt. And so it's been a big process of uh, really dialing in what's going to work and what's not going to work. Well, my friends have been a huge help. Um, you know, got to thank Leo for helping me get the initial floor in. Um, Nicole's helped me a tremendous amount through a bunch of different uh, odds and ends. Uh, my friend Kevin, he's a you know a contractor, and he's helped me kind of think through a lot of design elements and um, give me tips on how to approach different things. Uh, let me borrow some tools here and there. Um, you know, friend Rob and. A bunch of other friends have helped me, you know, paint the, the roof of the bus, help me little things here and there, let me tools. So um, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to uh, Roxanne the Bus, DAP Bus, uh, Schooly Conversion, Mobile Home, Tiny Home, Mobile Recording Studio. Um, right now, as you can probably see, it's a bit of a mess. I am uh, mid-conversion right now, but uh, let's take a little quick little tour and let you know what's going on here. Uh, starting off right over here, we do have uh, our command center, the driver's seat over to our right. And uh, it's probably the least worked on, finished part of here. I've been kind of working from the back to the front here. Uh, but moving back here, we have our kitchen where all my tools are. This will be my kitchen sink. I'll have storage just over here to the left of that. Nice big area for uh, cabinetry and food storage. Coming right over here is the rest of the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to have a full four burner stove, oven, nice cypress countertops going to go on here in a couple of days, hopefully. Uh, I've got my 95 quart Dometic dual zone. Uh, AC or DC powered. I've got some room for a nice big storage drawer underneath there. Just across the way is uh, the bathroom here, which I'm uh, getting pretty close to finishing here. All pine uh, tongue and groove on the walls here. And uh, I'll have a composting toilet built in to a wet bath. Uh, so stay tuned, I'll let you know how that works out. Moving further down here, uh, I've got kind of the heart of the bus here as far as electrical is concerned. Uh, I'm going to have uh, 400 watts of solar panels on the roof coming down. I've got the MPPT charger here, the 30 amp I believe. Uh, I have a 30 amp inlet uh, from shore power to a transfer switch. And uh, I've got my 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I have 200 
um, excuse me, 400 amp hours of uh, AGM batteries. And uh, that is going to be running pretty much everything on the bus electrical wise, including the studio. Um, we'll see if I need to add another battery at some point, but uh, if my math is correct, should be good for a couple days on the studio alone, with solar. Um, just across from that, actually, scoot back for a second. This is going to be my full closet area and extra storage. I'll have, you know, a clothes rack going across here, some drawers on the bottom, etc. Um, going to go maybe for some uh, sort of dual French door openings. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, and then here at the back of the bus, this is going to be the uh, seating, uh, dinette area, if you will, eating common area. I'll have a uh, adjustable table here that will go flat. I can make a secondary bed across the seats here. And then right here on the other side uh, is my main couch and bed area right here. And uh, this is a nice big couch. Seat plenty of people and it'll also pull all the way out into a full size bed. And then, uh, yeah, you can lounge out here and enjoy bus life. So that's the tour of the bus. Thanks for coming by. I think coming up with another huge uh, challenge. This one's not gonna be so surprising because I'm expecting it, but it's gonna be doing the bathroom. Um, putting a composting toilet in the bathroom with a shower. So it's gonna be a wet bath with a composting toilet. Getting things waterproof and keeping them from um, Getting water into the toilet and everything is going to be a big challenge. Um, I've thought through most of it. I think I've got a good handle on what to do, but uh, we'll see once we get there. Yeah, so uh, what happened one day with this mat at your feet? Uh, well, I was grinding some metal behind this wall over here to uh, make room for this. And this mat was there to protect the sparks from getting on the rest of the wood down there. And uh, it kind of started to catch fire a little bit. <laughs> a lot of bit. No flames though, just kind of singed. And then I stepped on it and put it out. So I thought. And then, uh, yeah, like 10 minutes later, I smelled smoke. And, you know, like a good quarter of the blanket was uh, just all singed up on the ground. So, you know, no big deal. Took over eight then, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tried to get this piece about three times and uh, failed. Got this piece first time, looks great, but for some reason, that uh, right side just doesn't like me, so. Little finishing things I'm not super happy about. My craftsmanship isn't as great as I'd like it to be, um, but it's functional and uh, I can always make things a little prettier as uh, I get closer to finishing it. Not to say things won't change in the future. Uh, you know, once you start living in it and moving in it, um, you know, you're gonna, I'm probably gonna discover things that I wish I did differently or might improve upon. Uh, but at the moment, I'm really happy with the layout and how everything's coming together. We'll start off here in Hollister. We're going to head north along the 101, get up here into Mendocino along the 1. Keep on heading up north on the coast of Oregon into Washington, towards Seattle. Then I'll come over here to Idaho. Explore Idaho a little bit, go down into Utah, explore Salt Lake a little bit more, see what there is off of there. I want to explore in Colorado, then I'm going to go down into New Mexico, and then over into Arizona, see the Grand Canyon, dip back into southern Utah a little bit, then work my way on back home. So my parents, they uh, have been really supportive of me uh, in this whole process in traveling and uh, building out this bus. Uh, they've uh, allowed me to move back home, um, give me a place to park the bus, and uh, my dad's got a big shop, and so he lets me use his tools and his space, and uh, so they've been really supportive in the idea. So another 
side of um, you know, building the bus out is that uh, I want it to be a mobile studio. Part of what I want to do with that is get back into music. I feel like I've kind of been out of touch um, with recording and music for a few years, um, kind of doing some other endeavors, and I want to get back into that. And so I'm going to build a mobile studio out of it and travel around. I want to do a video series, and I want to record singer-songwriters, acoustic ensembles, folk Americana style of music, uh, kind of branch out into some other genres that I haven't worked with as much before in the past. And I want to make a video series traveling around, recording these groups in front of the bus, and give them, you know, not a professional studio quality, because um, obviously I'm in a bus, I can only do so much with the tools I have um, here, but give them a super awesome polished demo, something that they'd be really proud of, and you know, targeting musicians in, in groups that maybe don't have access to recordings. And a big positive of being in a bus is that while I'm traveling, I can come, I can go to you. You know, we can book a session and we can record for a week in the Grand Canyon, or we can go, uh, you know, to the woods or somewhere, wherever you want, remote location. Being in a bus, being off the grid, you know, full solar capabilities, I'll be able to run the studio equipment for, you know, four to six hours a day. Um, with the solar alone. That's a really exciting piece for me is just to be able to get back to my music, record, travel, explore, and um, just truly be free again, I think is, is kind of the idea there.